Jesus is King. Welcome back to A Father's Bookshelf. This is an offering to our Mary, Queen of the Home Domestic Church Group. Our Guild community supports this apostolate. If you want to be a part of this group, where Catholics from all over the United States and the world, we talk about how we can build up each other and pass down the faith in our domestic churches. So, you can go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register to join our guild community, support our apostolate. There are requirements for the apostolate, daily prayers, invoking our patrons, like Our Lady of Victory, but also Mary, Queen of the Home. That's the patroness of our domestic church group. So today's topic is a very important one. It's the topic of miscarriage. And this is a very important book written by uh, Mrs. Theone Bell. And the topic of miscarriage is very intimate to many families. Many, many families have lost children in miscarriage. And it's a very, I mean, there's, uh, words cannot describe the sorrow and the pain, especially for um, some families who have had multiple miscarriages. And especially as Catholics and as parents, we have a great anxiety about the fate of our unborn children. We have a great concern and solicitude for them, as we should as Catholic parents. And this brings us to the theological truth about that every person who is born is born with original sin. Every person who was ever conceived was conceived with original sin outside of Our Lady and Our Lord, of course. And it is a dogma of our faith that if you die with original sin, you go to hell. That's a dogma. Every Catholic has to believe that. You have to believe that if you die even just with original sin, you go to hell. Because you cannot receive the beatific vision. You cannot receive Almighty God unless you receive sanctifying grace and justification of, of baptism. It, that's just a fact. And so... There are different theories about unborn children who die without ba without baptism because obviously they have no actual sin. They have no mortal or venial sin. They only have original sin. And so some, some doctors of the church have said that they do experience the, the fire of hell, the pain of hell. Others have said, no, they, they do go to hell. This is what Dante put in um, the Inferno. They go to hell, but they don't experience any pain because they should not be punished. Uh, so they can experience a natural happiness, but they cannot experience a supernatural happiness. However, there is a third view, and the third view is that we, we can hope, we can have a, even a reasonable hope, we can have a reasonable hope that God will confer the grace of sacramental baptism to that infant in order to bring them to the beatific vision. Now, I want to point out here that this, this view does not contradict the dogma that I expressed, because the dogma is that if you die without baptism, you cannot go to heaven. That's the dogma. But this third view is expressing the hope, the reasonable hope, that God will nevertheless confer that sacramental baptism in an extraordinary way. We do know it is, a, it is another dogma that there are three baptisms. There's baptism of water, baptism of desire, and baptism of blood. And um, so there are, God can confer sacramental baptism outside the normal means, but that is his affair. That's not, that's not our job to work that out because he is the one who creates and th this is one of the most difficult things about miscarriage is that uh, God created that soul. God created that soul and then took the soul out of this world. And so it, it can really cause an existential crisis because it, there is a lack of meaning. What is the meaning of this child? Why, O oh Lord, did you bring this child into existence and then put them in to the negative afterlife? And so that is, that, that is the, the reason for uh, other parents to take this third view. Now, so I'm trying to emphasize the fact that the third view does not contradict 
the dogma because it's the view, the hope, it's not, it's not the certainty, but it is the hope that because God wills all to be saved, that's another dogma from the Holy Scripture, God wills all to be saved. If God wills all to be saved, he will confer sacramental baptism to infants who die without that. Um, and one, one aspect of this needs to be considered is that whatever view we take on this matter as Catholics, it's important to realize that in eternity, if, please God, we make it to heaven, if we make it to heaven, we will see, God willing, we will see the place of our unborn children. And we will see that in the perfect beauty of God's perfect mercy and justice. And so whatever the exact certain meaning of our children who have been lost, we will know the be we will see the beatific vision of God, and we will see them in that beatific vision, in whatever sense they are in the afterlife. We will see them, and we will love them, and we will love God because of where they're at in the afterlife, because God we know is good, and so whatever the truth or the mystery of this most painful mystery. I mean, this is perhaps the most painful and sorrowful mystery of Catholic life. Uh, it's the greatest, most painful, sorrowful mystery of Catholic life is, is our unborn children who die. Um, but whatever is the truth of that mystery, we will love God for it in the afterlife. And we will worship God for it in the afterlife. And so all of that to say, to, to give a context for this book that we'll go through. So before we look at the book, there was one more point that I forgot to mention. And that is the fact that, um, as I said, in the Beatific Vision, we will see the mystery of the destination of our unborn children. And we will love that mystery. And one aspect of this that we can consider is that in the Greek Catholic tradition, um, there is another analogy for the afterlife, and that is the consuming fire of God. The idea is that heaven, hell, and purgatory are all the same destination because our God is a consuming fire. And so when you enter into the afterlife, you are entering into the consuming fire of God. Now for the damned, for the evil one, for evil ones, uh, that consuming fire is a fire of punishment and they experience it as torture. For those who are sinners, yet they are repentant, that con same consuming fire is experienced as a cleansing fire. And for those who have been purified, that same consuming fire is experienced as, as be the beatific vision. And so this helps to illuminate that aspect, that our unborn children are in the consuming fire, the love of God. The consuming fire is the love of God, and the love of God burns the sinners, because the sinners hate the love of God. And so that same consuming fire of the love of God becomes hell for them. So on the one hand, we can use the analogy that heaven and hell and purgatory are different places, different destinations, because they are. And on the other hand, we can also point out that is there ever really hell hell is experienced as an absence of god but is there any sense in which we can truly be ever absent from god because god is the creator out of nothing and so in that sense we can see that uh we went into the afterlife we will go and in the afterlife will be our our unborn children and we will love that mystery as to where they are because they have been placed into the fire of Almighty God, the fire of his love. And he's, he loves them. He created them. And this is what is expressed in the funeral rite in the new mass for the unborn children who died without baptism. In that ritual, there is an entrustment of the, of the unborn child to Almighty God. And that's what we do. So, uh, these are some of the, the concepts and the spiritual uh, truths and the dogmatic truths that have helped me uh, when we have lost children through miscarriage. And so this book uh, presents that third view that the unborn child is in heaven 
and it's something that can help children work through the grief of losing their little brother or sister. So here's the, the cover is, has the child going up to the, the throne of Christ and it's called a baby's journey to God. And this is also dogmatically true in that sense that whatever the baby goes in the afterlife, he does or she does go to God because God is in the afterlife. So um, there's also a dedication page, which is really great. Um, so it starts off with the pictures that the children would be familiar with if they seen the ultrasounds before the baby died. And it's uh, written in verse form. And it talks about, all about how our children were excited to play and they were thinking about their brother or sister. And, um, and then it enters into uh, the moment when the child dies. And this is, under, this is uh, written as Our Lady uh, comes to call the child. And um, the child dies and is, is placed in the arms of Mary. And Mary um, greets the child. And um, the, the family buries the child. And, uh, and so then the child is presented as, um, as in, in heaven to, uh, to help the, the, the family also get to heaven. So that's the book. So thank you, Fiona Bell, for this, this book.